All of us are aware that life can throw unexpected curveballs at us. One moment you can be driving home after a long day when suddenly a deer dashes right in front of you. You try to do all you can to avoid the incident, but unfortunately you can't react fast enough. Before you know it, you're bracing yourself for impact and your windshield becomes a screen filled with spiderweb cracks and splotches of blood. I am trying to muster up the courage to talk about something that happened to me last week. I know my story will sound crazy, not even the police believe me, but I need someone to just listen to me. Last week on Sunday, things started off completely normal. I was off from work. I slept in till noon and lazily cleaned up around my small one-bedroom apartment. Before I knew it, night had fallen and my stomach was begging for dinner. It was around 8 p.m. I didn't feel like cooking, so I stepped out to drive to the nearest fast food joint and grabbed myself something to eat. A half hour later, I was pulling into a parking spot of my apartment complex with a paper bag of chicken nuggets and fries. It was so quiet that night, which was surprising to me for a Saturday night. I went up the stairs toward my home, inserted my key into the door, and pushed it open. I stepped through the threshold to my haven, standing in darkness, and reached toward the light switch to illuminate my surroundings. I swung the door behind me to close it and heard a loud thud. The footsteps that followed that noise was so quick, and I felt a rough hand grab the back of my neck. I dropped my bag of food and tried to scream, but another hand quickly clasped my mouth shut, stifling the noise. A man's voice whispered into my right ear, Shh, don't make a fucking sound. The voice was smooth and yet so cold. A chill ran down my spine, as if his words ran through me. I was overcome with fear, and tears began to flow down my face. The stranger let out a frustrated grunt and forced me to move forward. I heard the door slam behind me, and we stood there in the darkness of my home. The man began to mutter something to himself, but I couldn't understand what he was saying. He took a deep breath and said, I'm going to let go of your mouth. Don't make a fucking sound. The man squeezed the back of my neck and I resisted making a whimper at the pain. Though my head was practically being held, I tried my best to nod my head in a yes. He removed his hand from over my mouth as I squeezed my eyes to hold back the tears I just couldn't believe what was happening. At that moment, my mind began to think of all the things this man could do. Please, sir, take whatever you want. Just please don't. Before I could finish my plea, my body was suddenly slammed to the floor. I was flat on the ground, and my body was hit with white-hot pain. The man had such a tight grip on my neck, and I was completely helpless to his strength. I said no noise. He whispered in a pained voice. I just laid there, motionless, waiting for him to crush my neck or rob me, kill me, maybe something worse. He let out a groan. It was so low that it sounded like an animal in pain. Hungry. He hissed, followed by the sound of him sniffing the air. The man let go of the back of my neck, and I heard him shuffling at my side. It was pitch black in my apartment, and I couldn't see anything. But I could hear my assailant tear at the bag that had my dinner. He began to shuffle away towards the wall. I could hear him shoveling the food into his mouth, and he chewed loudly. The distorted noise that echoed throughout the room did not sound like it came from a human. I thought I could use the darkness to my advantage 
and I started to slowly lift my body from the floor, inch by inch, ever so carefully so that I didn't make a noise. I thought if I could at least get on my feet that I could make a mad dash toward my bedroom and lock myself in. The man continued to groan. I successfully lifted myself into a crouched position. My knees were shaking so bad that I thought that I would collapse again. A low voice rumbled right behind my head that rattled my skull. Don't move. I felt every bit of my body tense up and I was frozen in terror. I just wanted this all to end. I wanted to scream for help and I wanted to get out of this absolute darkness. My heart was beating so fast that my chest ached from trying to contain it. Please don't kill me. Just take what you want and go, I begged. I promise I won't call the police. Just let me go. My cries were answered with deep, heavy breaths. The low voice was like a growl now. I heard him get up. As he rose, I could hear what sounded like bones cracking into place. Heavy footfalls approached me, and I could hear the decorations in my apartment rattle with each step. I felt something grab my arms, massive hands that wrapped around my tricep. I felt myself being lifted. I must have been a couple of feet off the ground. A hot mist hit the back of my head, and whatever it was, whatever it became, spoke, and its words reverberated in my ears. I was being pulled towards it, and I couldn't contain it anymore. I let out a scream. Everything that my fear had held back came out all at once. I felt something hot and wet hit my face, and my screams echoed around me. Slowly, sharp tips like knives began to sink into my head. Then, hey, what's going on here? A man's voice shouted from my front door, and the sharp blades that were closing in on my skull had lifted. I felt a rush of warm blood pour out of me, and my body dropped onto the floor. I looked towards the door to see a silhouette of a short middle-aged man. In an instant, something had burst from the shadows of my home, and I saw the shape of something tall and skinny with large elongated limbs grab the man. I heard him begin to let out a scream, and then a loud snap, and they were gone. I just sat on the floor of my apartment, looking out of the open door. It was so quiet, so deathly quiet, and it had all happened so fast. After a few minutes, I broke the silence with sobs and screams. Light footsteps came rushing up the stairs, and a woman came into my apartment. She flipped the lights on and found me in the crazed state I was in. She looked around and called out a man's name, and her confused expression soon matched mine when she noticed the blood on the ground. The police were called, and I was rushed to the hospital. My face was covered in blood, and I was cleaned up and medicated. I just wouldn't stop screaming. A couple of days later, police officers came to ask me what happened, and I told them what I could at that time. All I could tell them was what had happened to me in those long 15 minutes. Later on, I heard what the lady who had come into my apartment told them. It was late at night, and they heard loud noises coming from the apartment above them. They had ignored the noises at first until they heard me scream, and the lady's husband rushed upstairs to see what was wrong. A couple of minutes later, The woman heard my screams and was worried about her husband. When she came up, she saw me bloodied with her husband missing. 
It's been a week, and still no trace of her husband, and I'm still recovering from that night. The police still think I'm crazy, but they see the bruises on my neck and the teeth marks around my head. The woman is frantically looking for any information on what had happened, but all I know is that there is something out there, and it's hungry.